Hello, socialites, and welcome back to the Social Studies Podcast with me, Joe Dombrowski. And me, Gaspar Randazzo. From Netflix. Uh, you guys, you can uh, come to my shows. I'm going to be at the end of this month. I'm going to be in Lexington. Lexington. Lex- okay. Sorry. Lexington. Had a stroke. Lexington, Kentucky. And then after that, I'm in L.A. for a week. I'm going to be doing spots at the store and Ice House. Keep an eye open for that for when I start posting about it. Then I'm in Portland, Vancouver, Seattle, Milwaukee, Appleton, San Francisco, Fort Wayne, Providence, Timonia, Maryland, Spokane, Salt Lake City, Vegas, Dania Beach, Florida, Washington, D.C., Calgary, Rochester, New York, Pittsburgh, and Denver. And then I'm getting married. Get your tickets at thejoedombrowski.com. That's thejoedombrowski.com. Gas? And I will be in... Uh... Uh, Rochester, New York, New York City, Bridgeport, Connecticut, Phoenix, Arizona, San Diego, California, Poughkeepsie, New York, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and Chicago, Illinois. Get your tickets at GasparRandazzo.com. That's GasparRandazzo.com. When's your Chicago show again? May uh, May 18th. Damn, I wanted to come to that. Um, Where are you going to be? Uh, Rochester. Oh, oh yeah, done. Ooh. That was the whole reason that we couldn't do that whole thing. How you guys doing today? It's been a lovely week, lovely weekend. Um, So, Joe, I have an interesting story for you that just happened. Tell me. Well, I know you had an interesting story, too. And I know you've had an interesting life the past three days. Yes, I have. It's been a very interesting <laughs> past few days. So for those, all right, we, I don't know we're going to avoid this. I don't know what we're going to do. Gonna... We're not going to avoid it. Okay, you guys, listen. <laughs> listen. What a fucking week. <laughs> what are we kidding, Gasper? Yeah, what are we I kidding? Mean, we Joe tried and to I figure was... out a structure. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I thought you froze up for a second. We tried to figure out a structure because we're going to get to the show. We're going to get to talking about the trust on Netflix, with which Gasper is, and I'm going to say it, the star of. And uh, we're going to go into it, but we like have lives. We have other things, shit to do. And well, the social this has been my life for the last four days. <laughs> anyway, what were we going to say? What happened? Um. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. I don't remember the last time we spoke because it's literally been my life has just been completely crazy 30 minutes days. before we got on this call that's also true but um <laughs> <laughs> lucy has reverted back to coming in our room every night so remember when i was oh, like oh this has been great yeah. like we've now gone like a whole week like i think we broke the cycle nope right back in our bed every night so last night i was like i'm just like done i was like i'm so freaking tired this is like torture i literally i, I take her i said lucy I love you so much. I said, but you have to go to bed. You have to sleep in your own bed. I, but I grabbed her face because she comes into my room. She, I grabbed her face. And I go, Lucy, you have to. I was like grabbing her cheeks. She grabs my cheeks back and she goes, daddy, but if I do, you don't love me. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what? She goes, if, if, if I go back in my own bed, you don't love me. I said, no, I always love you. I love you forever, Luce. She said, you don't love me if I go back in my own bed. <laughs> she knows exactly. This little girl and plays you so she slept hard. in my bed last night again. Oh, because so, I'm gonna make her think I don't love her. But then I had a whole talk with her this morning. I was like, Lucy, make her think you don't love her. That was her 100% knowing she's manipulating you. She's a manipulator. And I said, Lucy, I love you more than anything, but you gotta sleep in your own bed. She's like, I know, daddy. And she gave me like this big kiss. Like, she just freaking played me. Also, yeah, it's it's bad. It's not it's not fun. She's getting like a little sassy attitude. Listen, there's this whole <gasps> What's concept. What's the sassy attitude? Tell me about the sassy attitude. So we're going to talk about the show, but like pretty much uh, like m- my daughter's teachers were like, oh, your daddy, you know, your daddy's on TV. She puts her hands on her hips. She goes, I know my daddy's been on TV. That's what she said oh. back. And also <laughs> they say it's the terrible twos. That's a lie and a myth. It's the threes that is where it's at. Is like that the, right? Oh, the threes. Because at two, they're just like bratty. At three, they give you logic for their brattiness. So it's like, I'm going to scream, and then I'm going to tell you why I'm screaming. Like, it's just very different. 
It's just a different type of three. Um, so what's going on in your life, Joseph? I, first of all, a lot happened this week. A lot happened this week. So did you, you probably are, usually you and I are very up to date on each other's, like what each other is posting and what's going on. Have you seen any of the shit that's going on? (laughs) With me, so I I had I know what happened because we had talked, but then I just briefly saw an Instagram story that's something that you had to take it got taken down or something. I don't yeah. I didn't, but I didn't listen. So the thing is, you post things during the day when I'm at work, and if you don't put captions on them, and you don't put captions, sometimes if you're in a really pissed state, I, I think like you didn't. That put can't captions. be true. I put captions on every single do one you? of my stories. All right, then I, I I do too. So maybe I just didn't read it because I was just at work teaching America's youth. So I just like, I saw you were pissed, but I didn't know why. So, okay. But give the backstory too, okay. because otherwise it won't so, make any okay. sense. All right. All right. And I'm going to do this. Okay. Shit. I'm going to dig myself a deeper hole. This is not good. Anyway, I saw, I came across this video of this woman who is a radical Christian, which nothing against Christianity. All right. Throwing it out there. Nothing against being religious. I do have an issue with like. False claims, and I have an issue with like justifying bullshit through the name of the Lord, because I'm just not having it. So this woman was preaching on the Internet in her car while in motion talking about. How when you get sick, it's actually it's just the devil inside of you and you have to get the devil out. And she said that when her kids come home and they have a cough, all she does is she makes them scream. No, devil, go away, devil. Okay, and she screams at them and they scream and they have to get the devil out. Right. And then she said, direct quote, all sickness comes from the devil. Right. And I'm like, no, because I don't know if you've ever heard of um, religious based medical neglect before. That's where like you won't get a vaccine because you don't believe in it. And then your kid gets like the measles. But because of like a religious reason. That's what I'm saying. Like you don't get the measles or or, or, yeah, like I I like like you like you have a toothache. Oh, it's just the devil. It will pray it away and it'll go away. Like there was after. So, okay, I made a video about it. I'll come back to that. But when I made a video about it, people started sharing their testimonies with me about how they had a parent or a loved one who like believed this shit. And like one girl said she had such a bad ear infection and her mom would just like scream at the devil and pray away and pray away to the point where her dad had to sneak her out of the house and take her to the hospital without the mom knowing. And the doctors were like, you were a day from going fully deaf. Like, wow, this is not like, I'm so sorry, but like you're totally allowed to like believe in whatever you believe in. But like if it's at the cost of giving false information to the world, I'm not having it. So I made a funny video about it. Which it which was, was very, very funny. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um. Anyway, side note, the original poster of the video then posted it to her page, and she actually was, she was a great sport about it. But the one thing she did is she, she wanted to thank me for making Jesus famous, which... um. I oh, that's why she... Was thank I thought she was saying that Jesus like thank I took it as she was saying like Jesus thank you for making this guy famous. No like, no no she was thanking me for making Jesus famous uh for using my one million platform to make Jesus famous because I'm like girl what is Jesus like an underground indie rock band that I, I just Jesus discovered. Is pretty Jesus famous on his own. Jesus. I made Jesus famous, but he already had not one, but two holidays. Like, Also, do you know how many followers he has? A quadrillion, right? <laughs> like Jesus has, the, Jesus has the most followers. He's the largest religion in the world. Unbelievable. Okay, so anyway. Okay. Goes on, goes on. Well, when she posted that 
and tagged me. I found out who this woman actually is. And I went down her page and I was just like, guess where I'm not on tour right now. I have nothing but time on my hands. I'm just like spiraling down this rabbit hole. (laughs) I found so much about this woman and her friends. And unfortunately, their MAGA church, I'm sorry, mega church. And, um, and, the pastor and I actually went to the church and I was like watching the sermons and it's like the most anti-gay shit ever. They say that you can't even if like, if you have a friend who's gay, you're not even allowed to like go to their wedding to support them because you're going to get the devil in you and shit. Anyway, it is sad, but um, she's got this gaggle of girlfriends that are all what's called a Christ fluencer. Are you familiar? <laughs> I mean, I could put two <laughs> and two together. <laughs> okay. They're Christ fluencers, and it, they're trying to make Jesus get more followers. Gasper, it just okay. It it's just it goes mild to wild. Like sometimes you'll watch these girls post some stuff, and you're like, mm-hmm, okay, this is just. I love Jesus a lot, but sure. And then there's a post that is like, we're Christian girls. Of course we met, dated, and married our husbands in the same month. And I'm like, okay. And then, and then they wanted to be baptized again because they just felt like they needed more the Lord. Gasper, a water park. Literal videos of them in the wave pool of a water <laughs> park being baptized with a slide behind them. Wait, 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 wait. You could be baptized in any water? Well, you want to go further? There's this one ringleader culprit out of the, all of She, first of all, this woman's a scam artist. I did so much. There are so many. She's being sued by the state of Texas. There's a lot. I'll get into it if you want, but I don't have to. She then opened a business where she like delivers certain essentially you go to her conference and you can pay a premium to be baptized by her at the conference in a horse trough. In a oh <laughs> that she brings. Gonna, I thought you say super soaker. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could be baptized in any. Well, think about it. I think Jesus was baptized in a river, right? Well, I was rich- gonna say, Gasper, a water park is not exactly the River Jordan. No, but I'm saying, and then like my kids were baptized in the pool at church. It's not a pool, but you know, it's a little, um, I think it's called a baptismal pool. It is called that. Um, (laughs) My kids were baptized in that, which is just water in a pool, but it's holy water. So I guess if you have a, if now do you need a wave pool filled with holy water or can we just douse a little? They're not, first, sure. Maybe if they had someone like no, but you get what I'm saying, like friggin' park. If you put holy water in here and then I piss pour... <laughs> like chemicals, like yeah, but the river has exactly. the same thing. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, I'm not... I don't know what to tell you. I don't know all what right. to tell you. It, it all I'm gonna say is it was alarming. Like I was like, oh, oh this is happening. It was just alarming. No, all right. I'm with you. So then I found out about the girl who's the scam artist and she like stole a bunch of people's money and there's just, and then she has a clothing line, a religious based clothing line, Gasper. This is how much time I had on my hands. I took screenshots of the clothes on her clothing line and I Google reversed image them. It is literally, and I'm not exaggerating, fully, fully shit that you can get on Amazon for like a fourth of the price. It's the it is Amazon clothes like one hundred percent. Amazon. Off, I have a question. And AliExpress. What's Google Reverse? Google I've Reverse heard is of what, this. You could like I could like if I like met somebody on Tinder, I could screenshot their face and put it in Google Reverse image, and then it would show like every image of that person like that's on the internet. Like a, that, and anyone can like, use Google Reverse. Anybody, yeah, anybody. Wow. Google Reverse image, yeah. But it, it finds that exact photo or it just I mean, like face. No, like, OK, like if I put that image of the clothes, it would mm. show me that shirt, like wherever it happens to show up on the Internet. And it was like AliExpress, Amazon. Blah, 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 that's blah, crazy. It's so crazy. Chris. So I'm like, all right. So that's a markup in the name of the Lord. But whatever. <laughs> all all these surprised. all these scams, all these scams, all this history. There's podcasts about how deep the scams from this girl go. Like, it's just. 
never ending, right? So I start talking about this on the internet because I had nothing but time on my hands. I fell down a rabbit hole. I'm known for my rabbit holes that I fall down. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? Wake up the next morning. I'm pretty sure they got the Lord involved. And my video was taken down. Just boom, gone, not there. And it was at like a million views. Over a million. Yeah. But it didn't get taken down on TikTok. So yeah, over a million. I'm just kind of like, game on, game on. So you reposted it? So I reposted it. And then I ran my mouth a little too much on story. And I had to take that down because my managers are like, this is literally not happening. <laughs> They're like, no, you're not doing this. Like, stop. Like, clearly they're after you. You're not getting your fucking social media taken away for this. It's not worth it. I was like, Jesus isn't worth it. And they're like, <laughs> we're not saying that. I'm like, you just did. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get followers for Christ. Right. I'm literally standing up for the Lord. Hello. But yeah, that kind of crazy. You, you know, what's wild. This is not. Please I tell mean, me. It doesn't make. And also, can I just say this before we go on? Like, I like nothing against religious people or religious No, I don't things. think this is against religion. I don't at all. But like, honestly, like when you're going to, you go to their page, there's a lot of hate spreading, but masked in the name of this is my religion. So I'm allowed to believe in this. It's not, it's full on hate. And there's a lot of bullshit going on with like telling people wrong information. And I'm just not having it. So I thought that was fair ground. That's where I stand. I don't need to hear the bullshit. So, save it for another day anyway no, and like honestly it's it sounds like you're it stressed you out clearly obviously because you went down your on your instagram stories and just started ranting about it which i know is what you do when you get stressed and joe honestly <laughs> if you're stressed you yeah, know what please what you this, know what i need one two three better this help episode <laughs> is brought to you by better help joe and we have made all your new year's resolutions maybe you have stuck with them, but maybe you haven't. Instead of all those oh, crazy- Oh, come on, actor. Listen to him. He's on Netflix and now he's reading this like a star. <laughs> and become a more balanced person in general. Better help in teach you how to celebrate your strengths while working through your weaknesses. Joe, no guilt trips here. Just supportive therapists who are ready to help you be your best self. Better help is entirely online. It's convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Whether you want to talk to your therapist over video call, by phone, or even by message, BetterHelp oh, no. makes it easy, okay? I know from personal experience that I know people who use therapy, who use BetterHelp, and they enjoy that they could do it from the comfort of their living room. They could do it from the comfort of even my bedroom where kids are screaming in the other room and I am trying to wrangle them in. Um, so if you're thinking about starting starting therapy, you know, definitely give BetterHelp a try. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash social studies today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash social studies. Joseph, Guess you know what up. someone asked me in the questions? <laughs> they said... How are you guys so good at, I was doing like an Instagram live. They said, how are you guys so good at sneaking in the ads that I don't even realize I'm listening to? <laughs> we just kind of got good at it after time. They huh? said that I don't even realize I'm listening to an ad. So for those of you at home, if, if you're a long or longer listener, um, we used to do the ads separate. So we would record them. So like we would get a list of ads sent to us like over email. And then Joe would be like, all right, I'll do better help. And I'll be like, all right, I'll do green chef. And then we and would then just submit them and they'd be on the We would record the them like I'd record them in my living room, like in a world where Green Chef is the only meal you need, you know? And I would, we would do these ads and put them in, but there wasn't like this, you know, interaction where like something would be happening. So now the way we do the ads is Joe and I line them up beforehand and we say, oh, I'll take this, I'll take that. But if the moment's right, you just jump on it. And the sometimes right. the moment's right. Like the, today, Joe, I ate, I ate 25 boneless wings. I ate oh 25 God, boneless wings. So we are going to talk about the show, um, but I had the premiere party, not right the second, but I had the premiere party for the show and I catered it, right? 
And there was about like 50 on wings. On daddy's dime? On, on, on my dime, yes. I he couldn't up, do it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Daddy's dime. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. So, Gasper, can I just? Melissa made me do it. Zach, lock yeah. in. Lock in and buckle up. Some of the shit I'm reading about you, the hoes are coming. Literally, hashtag Daddy Gasper could be trending within the next couple weeks. <laughs> Just saying. I haven't read anything like that. Okay. But also, I, I watched, I, I saw the part with me shirtless. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. But, <laughs> but anyway, so, oh, so I had all these leftover wings, right? So, we can talk about the party. You know, that's what I'm saying. So, we had a, a premiere party. I had all these leftover wings, right? So, of course, they were like, do you want to take them home? And my friends are like, you were like, this yeah. guy's definitely going to say yes. And Melissa's like, don't. It's embarrassing. She always gets embarrassed when I want to take food home. I said, you're talking about a tray of 50 wings. You can guarantee I'm taking it home. So I took the wing <laughs> and I took, there was a, one stuffed pepper left. I was like, throw that shit in there too. I paid for it. I was about to start putting all the leftover beers in my pocket. I don't even drink. Okay, so because I bought buckets of beer because I knew if I just said, oh, yeah, everyone go up to the bar, they'll destroy me. You know what I mean? So I was like, let's get 10 buckets of beer. It was about 75 people. I got 10 buckets of beer, which I overestimated. But then I realized, like, it wasn't that kind of like event, you know, like people drank, but it wasn't like a club, you know. Anyway, besides the point, so I bring the wings home today. I get to work. I brought the wings. I brought all of them. I was going to spread the wealth and share with everybody. Everyone's like, nah, I ate so much last night. And I was like, yeah, how do you think I feel? Okay. I also ate a lot last night. Didn't stop me. 25 wings. I put them because everyone said I couldn't do it. And I put them in a plate and I ate them all. And I don't regret it one bit. I don't feel good, but I don't regret it. Because like they all were like, holy shit, I can't believe you just ate 25 wings. And to Yo, me, what's that, going on with your cracked esophagus, though? We're going to disregard that because this is a big week for me. So nothing counts in life. But is like, your esophagus still cracked open? Well, I've been eating healthy. I had salad for three straight weeks. So it closed itself <laughs> shut? Well, I don't know what happened to it, but I've just been eating healthier. <laughs> and I did. I noticed I took a sip of a beer last night. Like, yeah, everyone was like, have, have one sip, you know, like, come on, you're not gonna even take a sip. It's your party. I took a sip like three hours later. I had like indigestion. It was like, <laughs> God, Ugh. don't even. Come and I was like, on. oh my God. And I tasted the beer and I was like, oh, hell no. But you know, it's funny. Someone bought me this water and they, they were like, we don't, you don't drink. We were going to get you like a bottle of champagne, but you don't drink. So they got me this water with a hundred dollars of Applebee's gift cards taped to it. <laughs> <laughs> they were like we figured rather than a hundred dollar bottle of wine which i definitely would have been like you paid a hundred dollars for something for me to drink once with a hundred dollars in applebee's gift card i could go on a tuesday they have unlimited wings they give you eight at a time which is nothing but you order the eight as soon as it hits the table you can order another eight and i just i said keep them coming and you're for fifteen dollars uh you literally blow my mind. Like, where does all this food go? And do you are you just constantly fire shitting? No, that's insane. Great. That's insane. That's insane. Okay, so a couple questions about your premiere party. Who was there? Okay, so I'm not gonna go individual names, obviously, but uh, I had. So I invited. All right, so <laughs> so what ended up happening was. Everybody's been talking about this now, obviously, leading up to it. And who, where are you? You know, 80% of your day, you're at work. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I work in a big building with 325 people. It got very tricky because, like, my social studies department is 40 people, right? So right there yeah. alone is 40 people. Plus, if you bring a wife, you know what I mean? A husband or a wife, it can get – it's 80 people. That's probably the beer. I just It just <laughs> came up on me. So – I, um, so, and then like, there's other people in the building, you know what I mean? So it's just like, it got really tricky and I couldn't invite, like, I have like five really good friends that I work with. And I was like, I can't just invite them and then be like, sorry, everybody else. We're all going to talk about the show tomorrow. And you're going to see that we were out. Then like, I was like, well, what if I told everybody don't take pictures? Don't do, you know, but it's like, this is a cool event. Like I don't, and I don't want to do that. And Melissa's like, look, here's the thing. Like, we work hard. You were on this show. It's a cool moment to celebrate. 
like don't invite the world you know what i mean like because at first like the place i had it at was like oh we'll post it to our instagram i'm like do not do that because i've been in the newspaper the last few days like staten island person going on the show blah blah blah, blah. i was like because then every teacher in staten island will just show up and then i'm not picking up the tab for strangers you know what i mean yeah then i was like I was like, maybe I'll just make it open to everybody and let everybody just come in. And if you want to drink, you want to eat, that's on you. But Melissa's like, don't you want to enjoy it and watch it with like your close people and not strangers who then you're going to have to smooze all night. Oh, hey, nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming all night. You know what I mean? She's like, let's just make this us. So we it was like my close friends from work, like my friends from work, not all my close friends. That was like 30 people right there. And then Melissa invited like 15, 20 people from work that she works with. And then we had like my like 15 close friends and my mom and, you know, my cousins came and it was nice. It was really nice. Very like low key. I know it sounds like 75 people. How could that be low key? But it's like 75 people that I'm very comfortable with. So it's and were like, you able to actually watch the show? And was that oh, your so first then, time seeing the episode? That was my first time ever seeing the episode. I didn't even tell you. So at three in the morning, I set my alarm for 3 a.m., I woke up. I was like, babe, you want to watch it? She's like, no. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to watch it. She's like, I'm so tired. And like, and then Lucy was in our bed, of course. So it wasn't like. And then I started it. texting you. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was answering you because I was up and I was having nightmares all night. I was like, I'm not. Oh, on my show. God. I'm going to be like a douche. I'm going to this. You know, you start your brain. It's, you know, think about the night before you filmed your special, you know? I like, guess. Yeah. You didn't have anxiety of like. Yeah, oh I felt some type of way for sure. And then, like, think about when you got your special back and you were waiting for it to come back. You were like, "How's it gonna look? What's my gonna, mm -hmm. you know?" Like, and then I had a panic attack. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it's the same feeling, you know. Like, you just are. I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like, how, you know? It was just like it was scary. Like, and then uh, I didn't watch it all day, but my students were watching it. So, like, they all had it downloaded on their phone. So they're just like, "Hey, Mister Andazzo," like. We, we, what do you think about this person? What do you think about this person? And I'm like, I didn't watch. Stop talking about it. So when we were in the bar, everybody was there. And I was like, all right, let's just get the show on the road. Like, let's start it. So I was like, they put it on every TV around the whole bar. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. And then I was like, can I have the remote? <laughs> and she's like, why? And I'm like, because I just, I'm, I know myself, I'm going to want to pause. But everybody loved it. Like, I, I. Yeah, I actually did that when I was on Ellen. We had a little thing, but I was like pausing and telling people. Yeah, because I was like, okay, right here, this is what happened. Oh, right here, this is how this went down. This is, you know, before we, we actually, before you even, we got there, before we even got to the house, we were blindfolded in the back of a car for about four hours then i was walked to the edge of the cliff blindfolded then i took my blindfold off and i was standing at the edge of a cliff by myself and i'm like and they didn't show any what of the it. Fuck is, they don't show any of that and i'm like what the hell am i here for like i had no clue i never knew what the show was about leading up to the show i didn't know what it was about i knew absolutely nothing so like I was like, where am I? Like, where's the and then the host, it was just me and the host. And I'm like, oh, hey, you know, are you a contestant? Are you the host? Like, what are you? And she was laughing. I was laughing because it was just like awkward. I was the first person to meet anybody on the show. Anyway, so when I, I explained <laughs> all that in before the so and then all my friends are just like, just play, play. And then every time I came on, everyone was just screaming, you know, which was cool. But yeah, um, fun. a funny part, this is really funny. So there was like 10 regulars at the bar who were just like after work drinking, you know? And it was like six, it was like seven, you know, six o'clock. They were just like the guy in the UPS uniform, the guy in the garbage man uniform, like all these guys, just random dudes just hanging out at the bar. So the lady's like, do you want me to kick them out? And I'm like, no, I don't want you to no, kick them no, out. Really. I was like, I don't want them eating and drinking my stuff, but I don't want them getting kicked out. Like, you know, good for you. Yeah. And uh, she was like, no, I completely understand. I just told them, like, don't touch the food, don't drink their stuff. But like, you could stay. So these guys watched the episode and they were so into it. But picture like every degree of what you'd consider like a manly man. It was like the construction worker, the sanitation guy, the UP. It was like all these guys in a line. And like someone gets eliminated at the end of the episode, they're like, oh, 
oh shit and they're like fuck <laughs> that bitch like they were screaming then it took them about 30 minutes in to realize even though i was narrating everything to realize that i was the one on tv and when and they did what they say they went crazy they were like i gotta take a selfie with you you're fucking famous so they were all taking selfies with me which was hysterical um you know and then it was just like a pretty surreal night but we won't talk about the show yet but like it was just surreal because it was like so like I have all these guys that I work with and it was just hysterical to watch them just standing there watching a reality TV show. Not only that, then everybody had their opinions. Everybody had their, why'd you do Generally this? the same or kind of, or people like all over the place? No, everyone's generally the same on the, you know. And then um, one lady, as she was walking out, cause I was like, so what do you guys think? And like, do you think I won? Do you think this? Do you think that? And everybody's telling me their opinions. And then like, of course, one lady's like, I think this, 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 this happened. And I was like, did you watch the show? Like, she's like, what? And I'm like, how did you just guess that? And she's like, well, because this and because this. And I'm like, all right, see you later. Thanks for coming. Get the <laughs> fuck out of the bar. And uh, so then I got home and Melissa and I then got home and Lucy was still up. Gasper was passed out. Who Lucy's was with them? A babysitter. We are, we are, uh -huh. their, their teachers are babysitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, oh, their okay, former okay. teacher. And mm -hmm. um. They, um, Lucy's wide awake. And I was like, oh God. Like, so then we had to deal with her for like another half hour. And, uh, and then finally I'm like, let's watch episode two. So we watched it and Melissa fell asleep and I was like falling asleep, but I already knew what happened, but it was right. definitely weird to see the confessionals because like, you didn't know what was said in the confessionals. You didn't know what was said when people went off camera and like went cliff side. So like, that was interesting. So, like, I was like, because you're watching. now watching times that you were there, but you weren't present for what was happening. Yes, like I was Wild. there, but like Joe and you know Joe and Sally say, "Oh, can we talk over there a minute? I want to show you something." And then they're like, "Let's do this, 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 and this." And you're like, "Oh shoot, that's what they were thinking in that moment." You know, yeah, it's pretty. Well, I guess cool. we could talk about the show now if you're open well, it's to it. It's now been out for five days. So, all right, well, before, well, before we do, we do though, spoil Oh, <laughs> well, I was going to say, no, wait, 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 but I will tell show. you one thing before I, before, um, before anything. I, so after Melissa fell asleep, it was 1030. Oh. I went down the rabbit hole of like, this was opening night of the show. I was mm -hmm. like, let me just Google what. And it's like, it was like endless. Like every time I refreshed the trust is the name of the show. Every time yeah. I would refresh it. It was just like another article, another article, another article. And I was like, whoa. And the articles were like wild. Like one of them was like, where did the mystery, like where did the mystery man Gaspar and Dazzo go after leaving the show? And it was like, after leaving the show, he went back to his quaint town in New Jersey where he continued to teach. And he also started a podcast called the social study podcast where he <laughs> studies being social with Joseph Dombrowski. And I was like, that didn't happen right away in my little bungalow in New Jersey, but thank you. <laughs> so, Okay. I do. What we did you guys is we went on our Patreon, patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. The fans have known for a while that this is coming up. So we asked them to ask questions after watching the first four episodes of the show for Gasper. And I'm going to ask you some questions now. But wait, but Joe, before you ask, I, um, we're on the same page. Oh, so never mind. I think, I think go ahead. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. We are. One, two, three. But new before... year, new you. It's time to eat well in 2024 with Factor. Factor is a meal kit that does all the work for you. No grocery shopping, waiting in lines, chopping veggies, or piles of dirty dishes to deal with. Factor sends you fresh, restaurant-quality meals right to your doorstep. All you have to do is heat them up for two minutes, and you're ready to eat. It's that easy. Gasper, you loved Factor when you got it, didn't you? I did. I, I absolutely. I mean, so the thing about factor is the meals are done for you. So it's literally you poke holes in it. The top comes with a plastic seal. You poke holes in it. You put it in the microwave for two minutes. It comes out. They are all delicious. The sides are really good. We had like zero issues with anything to do with factor. Um, I, I loved it. I really genuinely loved it. 
I personally haven't tried Factor because I had Factor delivered to my house and then I had to leave early for a trip. So when I got back home, there was Factor sitting on my doorstep for the past five days and I was not about to run into that bag of issues. But listen, Factor does have over 35 meals to choose from each week and they include vegan, vegetarian, keto options and even more. And Factor is the best way to stay on track. When things get hectic, Factor is flexible. You can change your order up every single week with plans that range from 4 to 18 meals. You can even pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. Head to factormeals.com slash socialstudies50 and use the promo code socialstudies50 to get 50% off. Damn, gas, 50%. That's rare that we get our fans 50% off stuff. That's code socialstudies50 five zero at factor com slash social studies five zero social studies 50 to get 50 percent off five okay zero. guess 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 first of all before we get into this um i just want you to know that uh one very big fan of the show who cannot stop watching is my dad I, which i'm shocked my dad is loving it, loving it, texting me about it, loving it. My mom, my dad, and I have all talked about it. That like, my mom, my dad doesn't really watch reality TV. He does watch Below Deck though. But my mom and I are reality TV nuts, and the three of us all agree that watching a person that you know on a show that also happens to be a really good show is wild. It well, is so wild to see you on this. Like, unbelievable. That I mean, that's cool to hear. Like, I will say this. So, like, my mom was so cute. My mom woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and watched all four episodes because I call her every morning at 7 o'clock on my drive to work. So, she's like, I wanted to have all the episodes watched for the call. Uh, and she's like, you looked so good. You didn't make an idiot out of yourself. Like, you, you were didn't. nice. She's like, you were funny. You were sweet. Like, you were you were played it good you know whatever but she's like it's so weird watching you because she's like she watched it twice now and she's like the first time she's like i'm only watching for you so like i'm just looking for you looking for you looking for you and now she's like watching it as like a fan of the show and what's funny is when i watch it i'm like watching it like i know everybody on the show you know what i mean like it's really weird like i know like people say oh how close could they have been? They only were there for two days. And I'm just as guilty of saying it. But think about it this way. It's it's two days, but you're with each other for 18 hours for two days. So it's 36 hours only. <laughs> in, in two days, you're with each other for 36 hours where you can only talk to each other. No yeah. phones, no distractions, nothing but... Hi, Joe. What's up, Joe? Hey, Joe, I'm going to drink water now, Joe. I'm going to go take a shit now, Joe. I'm going to go eat now, Joe, where you are like for 36 hours. So like, although it's two days, it feels significantly longer. So when I now, I can't say how long I was there, but you know, I, if you're there for any significant amount of time, you do genuinely feel like I know a lot about these people's lives. So when I'm watching it, I'm even like, Oh man, come on. That's not you. Like, why would you do that? Why would you say that? You know, it, it's interesting. And then when I watch myself, I'm like, is that what I fucking look like? Oh my God. Yeah. You I'm were like, texting me that a few times. You're like, like, Jesus Christ, oh, my hair, my this, my that. My hair. Like, I'm like, why am I spraying myself in the face with sunblock? Just out there, just spray in my face. Like not a care in the world. Like what Melissa's like, why did you wear those clothes? I will say Gabe Dannenbring. Gabe, shout out to Gabe, had the funniest um, appearance joke. He said, dude, he's like, damn, did you spend all your Kohl's cash on that outfit? <laughs> that was a good one. And uh, Jeff, shout out to Jeff. Not sure if he listens to the podcast, but Jeff said, uh, Jeff, a friend of ours said, uh, damn, you were true to yourself. A t-shirt, jeans, white sneakers, and always looking for food. And I was like, those were... That is a very accurate description of me. For also, sure. Also, Joe, I meant to tell you, one of the producers hit me up and she's like, she was like, Joe commentating. So I was like, they know who you are. She was like, Joe commentating on this is hysterical. When she was, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm not done. I'm not done. Was like, I was actually trying to be very 
because I was watching it very, very early. Yeah, well, so I didn't that, want to do you know, it's funny. She people. said, just, yeah, no, no, I'll tell you later. I, I, I just wanted to say, speaking of, if anybody's like, there's probably a bunch of socialites who haven't watched yet. So if you haven't watched, the show is called The Trust. To dumb it down for you, 10 people? 11 to start. Mm -hmm. 11 people in a house. I don't, I think it was what? 11 days, 14 days, and you can or not vote each other out. There's $250,000 at the pot. Who's ever there gets it split equally. So it, you know, if they're all there, they all get a chunk. If not, if one person's there, they get 250,000. That's the the gist of the show. Every night there's a voting ceremony and you and can choose to vote or not. And there's temptations given throughout. Through now, I do have to say this. One thing is I'm watching the show and I know you pretty well so when things are happening i'm like oh i know exactly what he's thinking right now and one thing in particular when it happened is there's these two guys in the house also gas are you friends with these people like i gotta tell you i, I i'm gonna talk from seeing talk, them on the show listen, here's so like we'll i do. don't know you talk from a fan perspective and obviously due to contract restrictions and things i can only I, I won't confirm or deny things. I'll just let you talk. No, no, no. But I want to say too, like, I don't want to be like, this person's a fucking idiot. Then he'd be like, oh, say, they're actually pretty good friends. Say, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I can't, but I can't, from a contract standpoint, I can't even say if I'm friends or not friends with them at this moment. Oh, okay. Well, because, like, I'm going to talk gonna, about them based off of what I know from the show, just as things. I would with any other reality show. And yes, I know a couple and, of them are probably going to listen. So no hurt feelings. I'm, this is like my job. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah and you're first talking from first. a fan perspective. And I will say, let me give a disclaimer for everything. <clears throat> when you, <laughs> this is my disclaimer. If I right now film Joe for 24 hours, right? And and Joe had two meltdowns during the day about a comment that made him mad, right? On wow, Instagram. he is and, talking from real and, life. <laughs> and I filmed Joe's two meltdowns of him flipping out. And then I filmed Joe calling his mom, yelling at his mom, and then arguing with Morgan, uh, you know. And I only took those three moments. And Joe had a great day. The rest of the day, he was phenomenal, fun, funny. And I took those three moments and I put them on TV. And I said, this is Joe, right? And I said, this is Joe. The whole world is going to say, wow, this guy's an ass an or whatever. This guy's an ass. And then you look and say, oh, how does Gasper hang out with Joe all day? But you don't realize that the, the 23 and a half other hours of the day where he wasn't doing that, he was great. And we were having a fun time. They only took those moments that were bad. So just you have to okay. keep that in mind when you watch a show because- like, good eye, good eye. You, because like a lot of people, I've been getting messages. Why did you keep this person? Why did you help this person? And I'm like, hey guys, newsflash. Like you saw three minutes of her. I saw 48 hours of her. You know what I We're mean? We're going to get so, to that. Trust we, me. And we will. So like, but I'm just saying, so like there will be some spoilers in this because, but this is, if you've seen up to episode four, then there's no spoilers. We're going to talk about. Right. You so know, the one thing that I knew for sure was when they're all sitting at the table and like you guys are about to go into like your first or second voting situation and Jake, the rancher cowboy. No, Jake, the military guy and Brian, the cowboy are very much doing this. Oh, we're a family. Oh, we're all going to make it. Family, 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 family. One of the only fucking people at the table who doesn't is isn't like, yeah, fucking family is Gaspar Randazzo. <laughs> and I knew for a fact that if him and I were at this table together, we would have been looking back and forth and been like, this one will come up my fucking family. Shut up. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> no, what are you talking so about? I, but I, all right, so I'm going to defend that, though. Number one, I've only knew them for a day. So, like, it's hard to be like, we're in this together forever. Like, I'm realistic. I know people are going <laughs> to cut each other's throats. So, like, <clears throat> it, I'd be foolish to be like, we're in this forever. I love you guys. Also, I don't really say I love you to people unless, like, I actually love them or, like, I know them, like, for a significant amount of time. Like, it drives me nuts when people are like, you know, meet people for a day and then they're like, oh my God, I love Joe. He's the best. I, you know, it's like, 
And then you're like, I love you as you're leaving. Like, I don't make my kids call like my friends, aunt and uncle. Like, they're not your aunt and uncle. Like, you know what I mean? That's not connected, but it's to me, it is. So like, I, I, so like that, I, I, it's hard. Cause like, we did make a pact where we were like, like, you know, this wasn't all shown on camera, but we were like, hey, let's really not vote. Let and the record see. show that Gasper does not make his kids say that. But the day I met Lucy, she goes, bye, <laughs> Uncle Joe. And we were all like, oh, uh, OK. <laughs> but that was strange. He does not. We don't do that. Like, but I have a brother yeah, <laughs> named Joe. So maybe she got confused that he got six feet taller. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So like we had talked about like preserving it and making it to the end all together. But like the whole speech mm. about like when you hear your family, like I'm not the fucking Olive Garden. You know what I mean? Like I don't need to say that. I was just like, all right, yeah, we're not voting each other out because we wanted to give people a chance. We were yeah. like, we knew each other for a day. I'm going to meet you in one day and be like, actually, you fucking suck. I'm getting rid of you. After yeah. one day of meeting you, I was like, let's give people a chance. I didn't know the whole, you know, fam Olive Garden speech was coming. Uh, and and that was inevitable, right? At that, so like point. that's why I was just like, "What the hell?" Like I don't even know. Um, I gotta look, watch it again, and see my face. We don't have too much time, uh, but I did want to get to some of the Patreon questions. You guys can be a Patreon member and support the podcast at patreoncom slash studies podcast. And the Patreon really does help us, guys, because all the costs associated. Yes, we do do ads. You hear the ads. We make money off the ads, and that's awesome, and and it's nice, but. The editing of this stuff costs a lot, a lot of money. So it, it was coming to a point where we're almost like either breaking even or it's sometimes costing us money to run the podcast. And like, we love doing this. We love talking to each other. We love the interactions we have with people, but we also financially, we're giving up a lot of time. Like right now I could be with my kids. I could be with my family and we're giving up time. So like the Patreon really does help us so thank you guys for becoming members and for supporting and joining and for being a patreon member there's bonus content over there like the podcast is an hour ish long so when we're done here we're just gonna shut it off and the rest will be on patreon patreon member faith says gasper you are killing it lots of bottles were popped and we as socialites know that you get drunk off of two sips of wine what did you drink in your champagne glass and the other glasses or did you just fake your sips so that's a good question i think so, one of the, i saw one of the glasses was actually red and the rest were champagne one time was it mine i i, I don't know yeah that's uh, one time when there was so, a cheers i was okay, like oh so probably gaspers no, all right. So one person, I'm not going to out anybody, but one person was not drinking at all for personal reasons, whatever. And um, because they were so pregnant. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> what? So one person wasn't drinking, um, and because they weren't drinking, there was always, uh, there was always, as you know, as as you all know, Joe's already um, messaging in the chat about who it was. So. Um, yeah, so they weren't drinking. So their, their glass was always not alcohol. I'm not a non drinker. I can drink if I wanted to drink. I just don't drink. So like they would put the champagne in the cup and I'd be like, Oh, cheers. And I'd be like, mm, okay. And then I put it down for, for the cheers. Right. Like yeah. it, alcohol could touch my lips. I'm not like, you know, going to go jump into a river a wave um, pool this is baptized. a great question and i thought so, yeah. about this one too one of the games that you guys play at the very beginning is everybody has a secret in the box and then like one side of the room has to guess what the secret whose secret it is now what was a little bit frustrating is they left about four of you out you mm -hmm. being one of them mm -hmm. so this question comes from Emily Lawrence on Patreon and it said, did everybody have a question in a secret in the box? And if you did, what was yours? Okay. That's an awesome question. All right. So first off, the secrets blindsided us all. We didn't like give them a secret. And then they were like, here we come. We're going to say it. The see So then of course, in my mind, I'm like, what's when they came out and said, we have a box of secrets, a million things are running through my mind. Cause I'm like, what could this, what kind of secrets do they have? Like what secrets, what secret, like, where did they dig up? Like in eighth grade, I cheated on a test. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> where do they even get these secrets? 
Now, one thing, when you are filling out the applications and the paperwork to be on the show, you are literally filling out thousands of questions. Like, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Oh, well, no, I'm exaggerating. Maybe like 500 questions, 600 questions, right? And it's like everything that you could ever think of. It's like, tell us the most embarrassing thing that ever happened in your life. Tell us the most this, tell us that. Tell us about a pet you had that died and buried in your backyard. Like all this crazy stuff. Like, And you're just answering, 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 answering. And then I guess through that, they just took what your secret was or like, you know, um, so I, I don't even, yeah, I don't even remember exactly like where I filled this out, but my secret was, and I'll tell you guys, cause I was like, my secret was they asked and I was like, I guess I said at one point I went to China on a dare with a girl which you all know this, like that I went to China when I was in college on a dare with a girl. That wasn't a secret though. That's a story I tell all the time. I tell it when I do stand up. It's like, there's no real secrets about me. I'm pretty open. So like they said it across the room and they were like, oh, went to China with a girl, uh, you know, on a dare with a girl. And I was like, yeah, that was me. And they were like, oh, cool. Well, like they all guessed. They were like, oh, it might be this person. And then they were like, Oh, I was like, no, it was me. And they were like, oh, cool. <laughs> like, and then they just Can like. Can you tell us some of the other secrets that weren't aired? I really, I'm going to be honest. I don't fully remember because like they probably were like mine where it just wasn't memorable. But Good. I will tell you this. There was one that was, I slept with 150 women to get revenge on an ex. And they, 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 that one was on the show. Yeah, yeah, that was on the show. And they literally had a guess who it was. And they looked down the line. They go, oh, it definitely wasn't you. <laughs> to, to me and i was like oh okay i could have slept with who d- was that one again i don't know it, if was, it was that guy confirmed was it ever who was it then i can't say because if it wasn't confirmed i can't say it hold on it was so, confirmed i'm pretty I, sure it was confirmed i don't oh, know but okay. just well yeah i i'm remembering hearing it on the show did they leave it open-ended or something Maybe. Oh, maybe the person just didn't confess. I don't know. The person didn't confess. So it leaves you to just wonder. They accused Jewels, the stripper, of it it was no, that's what happened. And he's like, it's not me. And then no one confessed. I think it comes Um, up later. So I don't want to say. Okay. Uh, Did did you really eat three steaks? This is coming from Patreon member Amy. (laughs) Of course. I I, I think I ate more than three steaks. I ate so much at that barbecue that I almost exploded. I felt yeah. sick. Amy has a few more questions, but we'll answer those in the Patreon because I want to give a couple other people some other fun. Jen! Love you, Jen. Jen, Jen. asks... Jen, um, I don't love you because I don't love anybody. I <laughs> love Jen. Kidding. Jen's fantastic. Jen, my kids could call you Aunt Jen. Guess <laughs> how long... And this is a little bit of a spoiler if you haven't watched more than episode one. Just keep that in mind, everybody. Um... At one point, you go into the vault with Bryce. How long were you actually in the vault? Well, I'll give you an even better answer to that. Okay, so you are in the vault for about... And Okay, here, look, here, let's start here. Let's start here. I've been so curious about this. Is the vault actually in the basement? I can't say. Why? Because that's like... I, I can't. I just can't say that one. The vault is a... A, like a, a, it's they, a room. It's a it's and, a room that they converted into a, you know, not converted into you know this individual whose house we were at, you know, he had this vault in his basement. Okay, so then you went into the vault, and then I think Gasper that I can tell that they were kind of telling you, okay, like read these questions it's and so then like talk that. about what you think and like i think they probably told you like say your thoughts out loud or something mm-hmm. so that's so funny that you said that because so a bunch of people messaged me about that um that you uh, like a bunch of people were like they definitely made you no it's okay uh, a bunch of people said messaged me and were like you definitely had to read out every scenario when you were in there. Cause like I picked up the two offers and I was like, yeah, we, we know what we're doing. And the other guy's like, yeah, we know what we're doing. And we were like, cool, we're ready to get out. And then they're like, no, 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 no. Now you need to 
read each one out loud, discuss every possible scenario that could or couldn't happen. We are in the vault for about, I would say, two hours. Oh, my God. I would have wanted to die. Two hours. And I was starving because at that point, the stakes were wearing off. So I was like, you got to get us something like um. But yeah, I was in the vault. Oh no, I wasn't. That was the stakes. Whatever I ate was wearing off because I was. I remember literally shaking. Also, this so filming would usually start like we'd be up at six a.m. and we wouldn't finish till about midnight. So Did they wake you up. Yeah, they wake you up. And, oh uh, hell! And no. also, wait, th- you'll appreciate this. There's a scene where we're all at the table. And you could just see in my face, I was like, I'm fucking done. I was like literally falling asleep because like when we're at the table. What if you the... did? Were you allowed to nap? Like, could I like no. wake up and then no. like go take a nap on the couch? No, no. What would they do? Um, well, I mean, you could, but they'd be like, why the fuck are you taking a nap? We were on our feet filming most of the day. Like, Jesus. you really couldn't just like go and be like, I'm going to go nap for a while. I would have been like, like, I'm not really napping. Well, I, if there's downtime, when there was downtime, you could nap, but like they didn't want you napping. They're not you know, paying you to nap, you know? And then, uh, but like anything that's filmed takes like at least minimum two hours. So like when you're at the table, like, you know how they have like those discussions at the table, that discussion was about an hour and a half, two hours long. Mm -hmm. And it's condensed to like a minute, two minutes. But like, so like when Jake was like, we're all family, that's a two hour conversation. Oh, of it. God. So it's like everybody talks, everybody has their say. Then you wait for everybody to go vote. The voting was far. So when you were waiting for them to vote, they would be gone for about 10, 15 minutes. So although you see, like, I'm not going to vote, it was that was 15 minutes. So you're waiting for every person, every person. Then, like, even after you're eliminated, you're at the table. And it's like, does anyone want to say anything? Does anyone want to? And like, Your just weight is a lot of that. So like you, Uh, it's, but the time in the vault, you're in there for a while. And it was like, damn, this is fucking. Jeez. So many more questions over at Patreon. Again, if you guys want to become a Patreon um, uh, member, patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. We will be completing this conversation over there. So if you want to hear more about the first four episodes and these Q&A from our Patreon fans, you can get much more unedited dirt about the trust on netflix uh you guys go watch my special don't eat the crayons on youtube you can also get tickets to my show at the joe and at me gasparandazzo.com you guys are fantastic we love you guys so much go ahead and leave us a five-star review on yes please Apple leave Podcast. us reviews they mean a lot to us we need them to um help us you know do better we we love getting the reviews and also oh we're on a new uh youtube channel so look up the social studies podcast on YouTube. a new instagram it's the dot a new, a new instagram and dot... a new youtube actually casper yeah sorry we have no we have both we have both we have a new new instagram and a new youtube so you guys can go over there find them both instagram is the dot social dot studies dot podcast. That's what I was trying to look up. <laughs> Find us and we'll see you next Monday. Bye guys. Bye guys.